And with those shades applied, well, our Death Watch miniatures are what I would call a kind of tabletop standard now. Um, but of course, we're not going to leave it there. We are instead going to do a bunch of highlights to really take them and push them up to the next level. So for example, as I said, we're going to be taking our aggressors and we're going to be turning from this into this type of thing. You see? Similarly for our intercessors, taking from this to this. So, I don't have an apothecary in a lieutenant example. I do apologize. <laughs> These are unique miniatures, ones that I only have one of. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna deep dive into all of those highlights. So the place we are gonna start with all of our highlights is on those metallics. And the easiest one that we're gonna do first is we're gonna be using iron hand steel for all of the silver. Now there's a couple of different th techniques that we're going to use as we do this. So I'm just going to point all of them out because whilst we're saying that these are highlights, some of them are highlights and some of them are layers. So the place to start by looking at these is in fact with our aggressor. So I'm just going to move the rest of them out of the way. Like that. So for our aggressor, what we are going to do is we are going to highlight all of the silver, but on his power fist on his left hand, well, on his left hand, uh, we are going to do a little bit of a layering technique. So, across the kind of flat of the power fist here, we just want to brighten that right back up. So just this kind of wide armor panel here, we just want to do a layer all over with the iron hand steel, like this. Because we don't want it to be kind of too dark is what that shading has already done. We just want to avoid the kind of recesses where the Basilicanum Grey has settled on the Power Fist. So around areas like the rivets, and just around here on this little, little thing here. I just want to go under there as well, like that. You don't need to worry about doing the underside because, well, it wouldn't be as shiny because it's shrouded under his arm. Colour that bit in there as well. What we're also going to do is we are going to highlight everything, but on the shoulder pad, what we want to do is we want to, again, because it's so large, we just want to do a full layer like this over the top. And similarly, down here like this, along the trim. Like that. And then on the inquisitorial eye seal on the shoulder pad, and do it like that. Similarly again on the top. Just not trying to get any of this on that kind of, you see where there's the lip there? You want that to still be kind of slightly darker. You just want the flat outward facing panel to be nice and bright. Same with the little cross pieces on the eyes. And then on the text on the shoulder pad, you just want to it's kind of a layer, but we just want to kind of capture all of the letters, but without getting it in the recesses as well. So this, you can almost kind of do this a little bit like a dry brush, but not really. You just want that to be nice and bright. And then for the rest of the uh, silver details on the aggressor, what we want to do is we basically want to do an edge highlight. So like on the fingers, you just want to grab a little bit more paint. So like on the fingers, you just want to pick out the edge. Like that. So, what we're going to do after we've done that on our intercessor is we are going to similarly here, what we're going to do is we're just going to edge highlight everywhere on this now. So like on that shoulder pad, rather than do a full layer, we are just going to do an edge highlight and we can do that across all of these sections on the intercessor 
apart from all this combat blade. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a layer across the sharp cutting edge of the blade and leave the other side of it with the darker shaded metal color. Like that, just to give it a kind of two-tone style thing. Like so. And then we would highlight the other edges so you can see it goes from the bright to the dark. And then if you highlight it, Like that. Perfect. So we'll go back and again, we'll do all of the highlights on him. Similarly, we're gonna do a load of bunch of edge highlights on the Lieutenant, but on the sword, we are gonna once again, we just wanna do a layer of this iron hand steel all over the cutting edges of the sword, which in this case is going to be both edges. We want the sword to be nice and bright, like that. And we'll do the same thing on the next side. And lastly, what we're going to do, I'm just going to wash my brush just a second, of our apothecary, is we're going to, again, we're going to highlight all of the silver details, but for any of the screens and any of the little lenses or vials or anything like that, apart from his eyes, what we want to do is we want to do full layer like that so it's nice and bright so for example on these little lenses up here just want to color all over that like so similarly on the little magnifying glass do it again like that and on the lamp we're going to do the same thing on those recesses or those bits that we want to be nice and shiny. And then similarly, going to do the edge highlights. Like that. And with all that iron hand still applied, what we now want to do is we want to use some Stormhost Silver. And we want to use this to highlight any of the sharp edges, for example, here on the sword. So just want to pick those out like that. But similarly, any of the, like, the little corners on the rest of the silver details, just to give it that kind of little twinkling and real air of sharpness. We want to do that on him. Similarly, we want to do it on this guy's combat blade. Going down right the way like that. And similarly, once again, just pick out the sharp details. And again, on the aggressor as well. And on the apothecary. And with that done, what we're now going to do is highlight all of the gold using Liberator Gold. I want to do this across all of the miniatures. Just picking out all of those edges like that. And with all of those silver and gold details highlighted, what we are now going to do is highlight all of the red that we haven't already done. Now, on the aggressor, we are excluding the rope because the colour that we're using is Evil Sun Skull and it doesn't really show up on the rope. But what we are going to be using this for is on the flesh toe is red parts, which are the gun casings and the cables is the word I'm looking for there. So as I said, we're taking some Evil Sun Scarlet and we're just going to highlight the edges of all of these sections like this. Like that. Just turn it around to do just that little bit there. as well, like that, and similarly on the underside here, like so. What we also want to do, as I said, is we want to just run a little line of this down the center of all those cables.
like that. Yeah, to do the whole cable, you can just do the kind of most prominent sections. So like in this guy's case, it's up there like that. These two little bits there. And this cable down here. You want to do it running down there like that. Similarly, like that as well. What we also want to do, I'm going to do the other guys. Similarly, we've already done his robe. So what we just want to do is we just want to highlight his gun. Like that. And it's the same deal for his gun and the same deal for his gun too. So you just want to go over and do the whole, well, all of these red details and then we'll come back. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we are going to use some Thins Down Fire Dragon Bright. And we're going to use it on any of the remaining red details. Now there shouldn't be a lot because we've already, well, we've already done them. So just checking around. In fact, we do have some on the back, just there on that Medicaid symbol there. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna use this Fire Dragon Bright. Just take a small amount of this. And on the ropes, what we wanna do is we're gonna pick out all the little strands of rope. Like that. On that Medicaid symbol on the back of the apothecary. Take a small amount of Fire Dragon Bright. And we just want to hit the edges very carefully. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on the last of the kind of, you know, generic highlights across all of the miniatures before we finish each one off one by one before coming back round to doing the basing. Now, the next thing we are going to work on is all of that black armor. And these are going to be a color of rust gray, followed by a spot highlight after that. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to pick a model to start. So we're going to start with Primaris Lieutenant. So what we're going to do is just move these guys out of the way. Oh, that's the one we're going to be using. Let's just move him and move him. So, like I said, we are going to be using Rust Grey. And I'm going to be using, once again, the Army Painter Wargamer Insane Detail Brush to do this. Because what I want to do is I want to thin some down on my palette. And I want to start highlighting every edge of the model with this Rust Grey. Like this. Now we want these highlights to be nice and striking, which is why we're doing it on every single edge that we can find, like that. Rather than just kind of picking out the individual ones. Because if you ever look at any of the Death Watch box art, it's all kind of very bright, very, very clean. And yeah, so we just want to pick out every single edge. Just want to go very steady as we do this. And this will take some time, but once it's done, it looks amazing. And with that rust gray all applied, as you can see, our Death Watch armor has taken a massive leap forward just with that one highlight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off those highlights on all that Death Watch armor, or that black armor, I should say. And the color that we're gonna use is Blue Horror. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a small amount of Blue Horror. And we're gonna add this to the extreme edges on all of these armor plates. So for example, here on the aggressor, what we're gonna do is just here on the corner here, just wanna add a small amount of blue horror, like this. Yeah. 
and some new, just like pick out things like the rivets. So once again up here, just gonna add a little bit of blue horror like that on the corner. And just bring that out a little bit. Just to give it the impression of the light catching and just kind of, just how clean and kind of menacing this black arm is supposed to be. And with that spot highlight applied to all that armor, as you can see, it's now looking really cool. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use some pallid witch flesh. And we're gonna use this to highlight all of the bone and all of the parchment across all of those miniatures. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some Mephiston Red and we're gonna be using this in a couple of different ways. Now, firstly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to paint in the eye lenses of the three guys wearing helmets. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna use this to paint in the markings for the Lieutenant and also for the watch company that these guys belong to. Now he doesn't get those same markings. I'm not entirely sure why, but according to the box art, he doesn't have them, so we're not gonna do it. Um, but if essentially on their right knee pad, that's where the which watch company these guys belong to, their marking will go. So uh, it's generally a red and black design. So. What we're going to do is, we, as I said, we're going to use the Mephiston Red. So, the first thing we're going to do is actually on him, is we're going to just paint in his eye lenses. And as I say, the colour that we're going to use is Mephiston Red. And so what we're going to do, just take a small amount of that Mephiston Red and just draw a line of it going across the centre of the eye lens. Like that. Very easy. We want to do a similar thing on this guy, but what we also want to do is we want to paint in his lieutenant marking and his watch company marking. So, similarly with the fist in red, what we're going to do is just going to take a small amount of this on our brush, and on his right knee pad, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line going straight from the top down to the bottom of it. So we just want to draw very, very carefully, draw this line going down. From the top to the bottom, like that. And then similarly again, on the other side, kind of just have to angle the model like this a little bit, which is in slightly uncomfortable to do. We just want to make sure that we get this roughly in the right place. Like that. And then what we do is we use that Mephiston Red to just block that in. Like that. Now I'll go back and neaten it up in a minute, but what we are going to also do is we're going to use this to paint in the lieutenant marking on his helmet. And so this is very similar, but what we need to do is we want to draw a narrow red strip going all the way down the middle of his helmet until we get to the face mask. So we just want to get it from about there. Down like that. like that, and we'll block it in in a sec. What we do is we just want to replicate that on the top of the helmet as well.
So we want to do this same chapter, well, company marking that we've done on this knee pad. We want to do it on these guys as well. Don't worry about putting any of the Mephiston Red on like the little lenses on the aggressor that we've got there, as well as on that apothecary. We're going to be doing this slightly different. Just, we just want to do these sections like this. So we want to go in and do his eye lenses now as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Fire Dragon Bright, just a teeny tiny amount. And we're going to use this, just to add a little bit of a highlight to the front part of each of those eye lenses. Like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Corax White. <laughs> and so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Corax White. And we're going to use this in a number of different places, starting with our apothecary. And what we're going to do first is we're going to take a small, tiny amount of this Corax White. And we're going to place a dot of this in the top corner of his eye lens up here like that and similarly we just got a little bit of a dot in there just to make those lenses look nice and shiny what we're also going to do we're going to use this quarax white to highlight any of the areas that we shaded with the apothecary white. So it's like this little symbol down here on the gun. As well as the one on his helmet. What we're also going to do we're going to take our Primaris Lieutenant and what we're going to do similarly with the eye lens just going to have a little dot of this Corax White to the top corner like that we're going to use some Corax White to highlight all the little rosary beads in his hand like that what we're also going to do is use this very small amount of this to draw a line on either side of the lieutenant markings on his helmet. Like that. And we want to go all the way over the top. And with that done, well, you'll be pleased to hear that these two feathers are now finished. And so if you've been following along with the rest of your kill teams, you should now have a finished veteran intercessors and a lieutenant. So isn't that awesome? So we're going to put them to one side now because, well, we're going to wait to do the basing. So now what we're going to do is going to work on getting these guys finished. So what we are going to do next is we are going to work on all of the gems, lenses, computer screens, all those bits that we haven't coloured in yet, just yet. And these are only on these two gentlemen here. So starting with the aggressor, because this one's nice and easy, all we've got is we've got that little eyepiece. And so the colour we're going to use for that is Blood Angels Red. You might notice that I've got a bunch of colours open at the moment. And there is a reason for that, which you'll see very shortly. We're just going to cover that Blood Angels Red over the top of that eye lens. And because we highlighted it with the Iron Hand Steel previously, it'll be nice and shiny. So we don't actually really have to do anything further to that. So we can put him to one side. Now, similarly for this guy, what we are going to do is we're going to pick out a few of these lenses with the Blood Angels Red. Starting with, I think, this one up here. So we're just going to cover... Blood Angels Red over it like that. Similarly on a few of these buttons down here. Add a little bit of Blood Angels Red across those ones. 
like that. We'll leave that triangle one different color for now. And then this little button here. No paint. And it was right over the top like that. I'm going to wash the brush. And next up, we're going to use some yandan yellow. We want to use this over the top of the lamp up here. So once again, that storm host silver slash iron hand steel underneath will make it nice and shiny. So it just looks nice and bright. Like that. We'll do the underside in a minute. What we're also going to do is we're going to use some warp lightning green. And we're going to use that on this screen down here. It's a little too much on the brush. No matter. Can just use the brush to pull the excess off whilst it's still wet. Similar thing with this screen down here. Wash the brush, and then we're going to use Talisar Blue for any of the remaining buttons that we haven't painted in just yet. So, like up here, and on the magnifying glasses as well. Next up on this guy's computer screens, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of Corax white, not very much at all. We want to use, draw any kind of design in that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little heart monitor type thing, just going across the middle. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the progenoid gland first and foremost with some full grim pink. So, what we want to do is just pick out the sharp edges on the gland. Just like that. And next up, just add a little bit of variation to that progenoid gland. I'm going to use some Fire Dragon Bright, just a little bit. We want to add this in the kind of little centers. Of each of the little nodes on the top of it. Like that, just so it kind of has almost like a pinkish glow. And with that progenoid gland painted, well, you'll be pleased to hear that the apothecary is now also done. So we can pop him to one side, excluding the base, of course. We'll cover that in a minute. So all that's left to do is to finish off the aggressor. We're going to be working on that face. What we're going to do now is we're going to use some Karak stone. I'm going to use this to highlight sharpest points of our aggressor's face. Now there aren't a lot here, so we've just got the, his eyebrow, a few wrinkles on his forehead, a little bit there. We've got his eyelid there as well. And with that done, we want to use a tiny amount of wraith bone Paint in the white of his eye. Like that. 
And next up, we want to use a tiny amount of Black Templar just to color in his pupil. By adding a dot, Black Templar just there in the middle. Like that. And with that done, our aggressor is now finished. And as a consequence of that, so is the rest of the miniatures. Woohoo! So, all that is left to do is to paint in the apothecary's base. So we're gonna move these guys out of the way because, well, we don't need to go into painting the apothecary's base in detail because the majority of it is painting another Death Watch Space Marine. Now, you could have done this at the beginning, but I didn't want to focus on it at the time. So, I'm not gonna cover how to paint him in full detail, but the color that we are gonna start with is divide and blue. So we're just gonna get on with doing that and then we'll come back and paint the rest of the base. And so with our Death Watch corpse painted in the same way as we've done the rest of the Death Watch Marines, well, what we're now gonna do is focus on the rest of the details of his base. And so the first color we're gonna use is Basilicanum Gray. And we're gonna use this on the Aquila rock just here. So we wanna use it like this all over. The rock. Like that. Just working it all the way around. What we also want to do is use it on this large rock just here as well. I'm not going to do it on any of the smaller rocks and I'll show you why in just a moment. And so with that done what we're going to do is we're now going to paint in the rest of the smaller rocks and the colour that we're going to use for that is Black Templar and the reason for that is because on the rest of our bases we've been using these small little black graphite rocks that I've been using on the Death Watch and on the Space Wolves basing. And well, we want to kind of try and replicate that a little bit. So we're going to use Black Templar instead of uh, the Basilicanum Grey. So we just want to take a bit of Black Templar and just want to pick out all these little rocks. Like this. Now we're not going to do this over the top of the Basilicanum Grey because we want a bit of variation in the rocks. So we kind of almost want it to look a bit like there's some man-made ones and there's some natural rocks for this particular environment that these Death Watch are going to be fighting on. And so with those rocks done, what we're now going to do is we're going to fill in all of that blank space around. Before we do the soil and the various like, bullets and spent casings and things on the base, um, what we're going to do is we're going to colour in all that blank space and the colour that we're going to use is Armageddon Dust. Just going to use our texture spreader here. And you just want to be quite careful as we do this just take your time to effectively using this Armageddon dust just on all the areas of the base that don't have any sculpted detail. And so with all of that texture paint added, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Iron Warriors. We're going to use this to paint in all of the kind of rebar and metal scrap, I guess you'd call it. Like this. Don't worry about those bolt casings. I'm going to do those a different colour. You just want to get these little bits. So there's... So there's a bit there, there's a bit there. I believe there's another bit just here. Like that. And with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to use some thin down retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the spent bolt casings. Just give a little bit of variation in all those metallics that we've got on the base. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use a little bit of basilicon grey just to shade 
those metallics that we've just dealt with. So those spent bolt casings and all that kind of silver rebar as well. And with that basilicanum grey applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some skeleton hoard. We want to use this all over that Armageddon dust that we've painted in, but we also want to use it over the top of any of the little bits of remaining soil that we haven't already painted in. So there's like a little bit there on the corner. There's these little bits here as well. There. I'm going there as well. Like this. And with that skeleton hoard applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to dry brush all of our bases with some tyrant skull. And what we can do on the apothecary base, at least, is we can just lightly dry brush all of those scenic details, as well as those metallics as well, just to give it like that impression that like the dust has kicked up all over them. You can add this on top of the marine as well. Just, just be very gentle as you do. Just little bits here and there. Make it look like he's been there for a little bit. Just like he's fallen into the sand and dirt. Like that. And the same is going to go for these guys, including over the top of those little rocks that I've added to the base as well. I've added some tufts to each of their bases, as you can see. And what all that's left to do now is to paint in the rim of the base. Now I'm going to be using some thinned down Corvus Black for this. And it might take a couple of coats. Make sure it's a nice, smooth, even black. But once it's done, the models are finished. And lo, a finished Death Watch Combat Patrol. And it looks awesome, even if I do say so myself. I love this black armor. I already said that in part one, but I just, I really, really, really like it. Especially once those highlights go on and... Well, Death Watch will always have a soft spot in my heart because, well, they're just really, 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 really cool. Um, I hope you enjoy painting your Death Watch and I hope you enjoyed this video and found any and all of these techniques really, really useful. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.